Okay, so we're going to look at the second section, or second part of section 6.2. This is on synthetic division. Uh, we looked at long division of polynomials already, so now we're going to talk about another way that we can divide, and that is through synthetic division. So you have some examples on your note sheet that we'll work on. And the first one looks like this. So it's 2x cubed minus 13x squared plus 26x minus 24 divided by x minus 4. Now what makes synthetic division a lot nicer than polynomial long division is what we're going to do momentarily is we're going to set this up in such a way that we're not really going to use the variables per se in our problem. As I think that was the one thing that got some people a little confused with polynomial long division was what to do with all the different variables. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to make a table. We're going to put in first as our headings all the different parts of the divisor that we have. So x cubed, x squared, x, and then a constant. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw two lines. We're going to draw a vertical line in between the last and next to last column, and then a horizontal line down below. This is kind of setting up our division problem. Then we'll put a little box over on the left-hand side. That's going to represent where our divisor goes. Now the next thing we have to do is put in the numbers. So the numbers that we put in are the coefficients, like I pointed out to here, of all the terms of our divisor. So we put in a 2 under the x cubed, a negative 13 under the x squared, a 26 under the x, and then a negative 24 for the constant. The last piece we need to put in is we need to figure out what goes in this box. And the thing that goes in this box will always be the numerical part of the divisor, the thing we're dividing by. Okay, so in this problem we're dividing by x minus 4. Now the only thing that's a little different here is we're going to take that minus 4 that I circled and we're going to put in the opposite sign of it. So we'll put in just a positive 4 inside the box. And from here, all we're going to do with the rest of the synthetic division problem is just going to be arithmetic. So we'll drop the 2 first. Our first step is always to drop the first number in our table like I did here in yellow. The next step is we're going to take that 2 and we're going to multiply it by whatever is in our box in the left corner. In this case, it's a 4. So 2 times 4 is 8. The 8 is going to go underneath the next column, right here, underneath the negative 13. Then we add up the two numbers in the column and put it underneath the horizontal line. So we get negative 5. We're going to repeat this process. So we'll take that negative 5 now and multiply it again by the 4 in the box. That's negative 20, and that's what goes underneath the 26. We add, and we get positive 6. We'll do this one more time for the final column. So 6 times 4 is 24, which adds to 0. Okay. Now what you have here is the quotient. But now I need to show you, I'm going to go back a little bit, and show you how we're going to turn this quotient into a new polynomial. What we do is, these three numbers that you see here by the arrow, the 2, the negative 5, and the 6, they are coefficients of the answer. The way we get the answer is, see how we started with an x cubed in the problem originally? We're going to drop one degree, and these are going to be the terms of our new polynomial. So instead of x cubed, we have an x squared, an x, and then the constant. The number next to it, over there in the corner, this is the remainder. Okay, so in this case our remainder is zero. So to write our final answer, we'd have 2x squared minus 5x plus 6. Okay, let's try another one. So we have 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x plus 15 divided by x plus 3. So again, we'll set this up. Our table, we have an x cubed, x squared, x, and constant column. Okay, the coefficient for x cubed is 2. The coefficient for x squared is 3. The coefficient for x is negative 4, and then our constant is 15. So that's the numbers that will go in our table. Then we put in our box for our divisor. And in this case, we're doing x plus 3. So we put the opposite sign in, so we put in a minus 3. Okay. Now we actually do the division. So we'll drop the 2. Then we multiply it by the negative 3 in the box. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 
and then we add the second column to get negative 3. Okay, we'll repeat this process again. So negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. That goes underneath the negative 4. We add and we get positive 5. Okay, one more time. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15, which adds to 0. So our remainder is 0. Okay, now we have to put the variables back into this answer that's in the bottom row. But again, we start with one less degree than our original polynomial. So we started with an x cubed, so now we're going to label with an x squared, then an x, then the constant, and then the last number would be the remainder. So our final answer is 2x squared minus 3x plus 5. Okay, we're going to try one more, and let's look at what happens if there is a remainder. This third example is not going to divide evenly. Okay, so here we go. We got b cubed minus 4b squared plus b minus 2 divided by b plus 1. Okay, so we'll set everything up. We'll put our numbers in. 1, negative 4, 1, and negative 2. Draw my lines. Okay, inside my divisor, remember we take the opposite of the number. The number is positive 1, so we'll put in a negative 1. Okay, and then from here, it's just arithmetic. So we'll drop the first term. The 1 goes down to the line. We now take that 1, we multiply it by the negative 1, and move it over a column. So the negative 1 goes under the negative 4. That adds to negative 5. And then we repeat this. So if negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5, that adds to 6. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. Now look at this last column here. Negative 2 plus negative 6, that's negative 8. We have a remainder here. So, when we go to write our final answer, there's a couple ways we can do it, like we've seen when we did polynomial long division. So the quotient, using these three numbers, will be b squared minus 5b plus 6, and then we can write r negative 8 for the remainder of negative 8. Or if you'd like, remember we talked about the fact that we can put a remainder as a fraction, it can say negative 8 over b plus 1. Okay, so this is just a couple examples of how to use synthetic division. I think with a little bit of practice, you're going to like this a lot better than polynomial long division. So there's some practice problems on the note sheet. Give those a try, and we'll talk about them in class tomorrow, and as well as answer any questions and look at a couple more challenging examples of how synthetic division works. Have a good evening, and I will see you in class tomorrow.